Hello! Good day everyone! I'm so happy we're together again for another episode of The History Lectures! This is Sir Jet bringing to you the lesson for today. We are still in the LCI lesson and today we will answer the 20 questions I gave you last time. Okay, so before anything else, let's have a quick recap of what the LCI is all about. This is how the LCI looks like. It's the oldest written document ever to be found in our country. And it is dug up in 1989 in Lumban, which is in Laguna. And it was, uh, it was interpreted, okay, by this guy, Antun Postma, the following year in 1990. And uh, he is an anthropologist. He's an expert in the study of culture. And he lived among the Mangyan tribe in Mindoro, who has a handwriting or an alphabet similar to the LCI. And the L LCI is 1,100 years old. It gives us how it gives, a, gives us a picture of how life looked like before the coming of the Spaniards. Now let's analyze the text. Okay, by answering the ans the questions we will be uh, discussing at the same time the details of the LCI. Very exciting. Okay, so let's focus on the answers. So I will answer the questions one by one. The first question I gave you is. Is there a date mentioned in the text? And uh, if yes, what is it? There is a date mentioned. And the date is not like our dates. It's not uh, like CE or BCE or uh, 2020 or 1985. But they call their year Saka year. Okay, the date mentioned there is Saka year 822. And um, the natives reckon the years actually by planting cycles. Saka is the Tagalog word for planting. Right? Magsasaka. Let, let's go and uh, saka the field. And so for them, one year is one, one planting cycle. Okay? So the next time that you plant your field, that is now the beginning of another year. So that's how they count the years. So the age of a person is reckoned by how many planting seasons uh, he, he has experienced already. Okay? Like for you, uh, maybe you are 20 Saka years old. No. <laughs> You, I think you're just uh, around 18. If you're a freshman, you are 18 Saka years old. So you have experienced 18 planting seasons. And so that's 8 to 2. So that means uh, their ancestors were able to count 822 planting seasons. And that's the date of the LCI written on it. Okay? Numbers 2, 3, 4. I want you to list down people's names okay and there are three people's names mentioned in the text they are Angkatan, Buka and Namwaran okay so we don't know if they're male or female only Angkatan we know is female Buka Namwaran we don't know maybe male because uh, they don't have the title lady but anyway, these are people's names, okay? Now, 5 to 10, I want you to find place names, okay? Or names of places mentioned. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm asking you for 6. So, these are the names of the places 
mentioned in the LCI. Tundun, paila, puliran, binwangan, dewata, emdang. Okay, so these are the place names. Now, by the sound of those places in the LCI, I know some bells ring in your ear. They sound like present day places here in the Philippines. What are the uh, places in modern day Philippines do you think sounds like the places mentioned in the LCI? So one place there mentioned is Tundun. Okay, ring a bell. Tundun sounds like Tondo is a big uh, kingdom before the coming of Magellan. Okay, that's the kingdom of uh, Raha Suleiman. Okay, but uh, this is uh, 900 CE, 600 years before Raha Suleiman. Uh, Tundun could be the name of Tondo. Another place name is Paila. Okay, Paila sounds like a place in Laguna, Pila. Okay, have you heard of the town in Laguna called Pila? It's uh, the town before Pila and the old name could be Paila. Another uh, place name is Puliran. Puliran sounds like Pulilan, a town in Bulacan. Yes. Binwangan. Binwangan, experts say, could be Binangonan, a place in Rizal province. Okay, on the other side of the lake from Laguna is a province called Rizal. And in that province, there is an old town called Binangonan. And that could be the old Binwangan mentioned in the LCI. Now, this is, the next one is tough. Dewata. Do you, uh, I, I don't think you would uh, find a place in the present day map called Dewata in the vicinity of Laguna or uh, Calabarzon. Because uh, Dewata, okay, in my interpretation is probably Los Baños Laguna. Okay, it's probably ma the area, the settlement down Mount Makiling, okay, or on the foothills of Mount Makiling, because we all know that there is a Dewata or a fairy living in the mountain in Mount Makiling, and the name of the, the Dewata is Makiling. Now, the name Los Baños is actually a Spanish name. Okay, Los Baños is uh, Spanish for the, the, the toilet okay? or the bathroom because there are lots of hot springs there that the Spaniards discovered and so they love swimming in Los Baños. But what's the name of Los Baños before the coming of the Spaniards? We don't know but most probably that is the Dewata in the LCI. Okay. Probably the people before the Spaniards called the place Dewata because that is the town or the settlement nearest Mount Makiling. Okay? Now, how about Emdang? Emdang could be Indang in Cavite. Okay, now look at that list. It seems that every province in the Tagalog region is represented. Right? So these are places around Laguna de Bay. Okay. And so it's very, very logical that, uh, that the places mentioned in the LCI would be places near where the LCI was dug up. It's dug up where? In the Lumban River in Laguna. At the mouth of the river is Laguna de Bay. So probably 
the places mentioned in the document are places where the owner of the LCI traveled around and we know that uh, they don't travel too far and wide uh, during that time they are on foot or by boat around the lake so the places mentioned in the LCI would be probably just the places nearby Lumban and that's these places exactly bullseye alright so this is the map of uh, Laguna is it clear in your in your uh, screen oh yes very clear and uh, Lumban is over there and I will plot on the map the places mentioned in the LCI the first place uh, mentioned is uh, Binuangan okay which is Binangonan and you see this island in the middle of the lake okay the northern half of that island belongs to the town of Binangonan so we put a star on that island okay that's Talim Island part of the municipality of Binangonan so this must be Binwangan that is mentioned in the LCI now number two is Puliran which is a town in Bulacan and Bulacan is north of Metro Manila okay so this is the modern day map this is Metro Manila Bulacan is north of Metro Manila so we put the star over there for Puliran number three is Tundun and Tundun is in the heart of the city of Manila over here okay that is Tundun now how about Emdang Emdang is in Cavite you see Cavite in the map okay so um, in Emdang or Indang Cavite is over here okay and then Dewata which I uh, theorize must be Los Baños and this is Los Baños that's my hometown actually and uh, that's where we put the star for Dewata and lastly is Paila which is Pila Laguna and it's somewhere over here near Lumban and this is where you found the LCI in Lumban so basically we hit the jackpot the owner of the LCI his name is Namwaran traveled in this area common denominator of all these uh, stars okay uh, is that they speak Tagalog Okay, beyond those places, uh, Tagalog, uh, the language of the natives is no longer Tagalog. So, it's, it's one big uh, region and we have several barangays. These are the names of the uh, mini kingdoms in the old times. And uh, we can see that people during that time travel from one mini kingdom to another. And this guy, Namwaran, carried his LCI with him wherever he went okay why 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 does he need to carry the copper plate what exactly is the LCI it's a receipt it's a recibo for Namwaran's Kotanda <laughs> or Namwaran's debt it acquits him okay not only him but his descendants of the debt he owed to the chief of Dewata so we can now uh, patch up things okay we can figure out now that uh, Namwaran must be an ordinary guy and uh, he has a big big debt owed to the Datu okay of Dewata the one uh, who rules present de los baños and in the old times okay you if you have an unpaid debt you have to work for the debtor okay you you have to you, uh, debtor is it called the debtor the one who who uh, gives money okay the one who g gave you the the loan 
okay you will serve him if you cannot pay the debt so basically you become a slave of that rich person that's how life was during the pre-colonial days now after you have paid the debt then you are free you're no longer a slave of that person so we can see that in the old times uh, slaves have a way out okay so maybe there are slaves who have no way out the lowest kind of a slave but there are slaves who can now work their way to freedom okay so there may be two kinds of slaves during that time and the other literature called them uh, the aliping namamahay and the uh, aliping sagigirit okay? and, and so there is a higher kind of slave and that's namwaran people who used to be free men but they became slaves because of a debt and uh, the receipt or the LCI is something that he will pass on to his children and uh, next uh, generation why because if the uh, if if the Muaran couldn't pay the debt in his lifetime his children will continue paying the debt his children will continue serving the chief or the rich guy who gave the loan to their father or grandfather so if the children and grandchildren would carry that LCI with them it's a proof that they are free men okay? they are already uh, paid of the big debt owed by their ancestor and so that could be the reason why all those places were mentioned in the LCI so if a descendant of Namwaran would uh, live or travel to uh, Puliran uh, the, the receipt is saying that this uh, document is valid in this kingdom or this person if you think he's wanted and he's hiding in uh, your kingdom for some unpaid debt no he is actually paid already and if he goes to Emdang he goes to uh, uh, Tundun all the places mentioned he can just show his uh, his uh, receipt and nobody will question why he is there so that's how the LCI worked so now let's go to the synthesis what are three facts we can derive from the LCI okay that talks about life of the ancient Filipinos okay I'm asking for just three but there are more than three that we can deduce number one or is that our ancestors were literate they can read and write okay they are smart people they are not dumb they are not uh, what the Spaniards uh, claim that uh, they, they are savages and uh, they are uh, no read no write no our ancestors were very smart people they can read and write the evidence the LCI it's a reading material okay Pe somebody wrote it somebody reads it everybody then could read and write because he can show it to any place he goes they can understand it we were a literate people next our ancestors had a different calendar from our calendar but nonetheless it's still a calendar we are a great civilization because we can reckon the times we can count the uh, years in our own system and, and so we are not uh, a dumb people but we are a very smart people Okay, if you have a calendar of your own. Another uh, fact about pre-colonial Philippines is that the debts were very common back then. Okay, the hotanda. <laughs> Up to now. <laughs> it, it, it 
it runs in the genes. <laughs> we are a people who love to borrow money from others. And um, it, it showed in the LCI okay, that uh, uh, people love to borrow money and people are helpful also. They, if they have money, they, uh, they give it as a loan to other people who are in need. So that's were very common back then. They don't have uh, money but uh, they have weights in gold as mentioned in the LCI. Another fact that we can see is that the kingdoms or the barangays mentioned in the LCI had contact and coordination with one another. If you notice how the LCI was uh, structured, it says there that the chiefs had a meeting and uh, in the hadapan, okay, in the presence of these chiefs, okay, they are uh, acquitting Namwaran of his debt. So some chiefs were there, some had their representatives in the meeting. And, and so we, we know that uh, they have contact with one another, they have coordination. Probably if uh, one fugitive will go to another barangay, uh, the barangay that, uh, where the fugitive is hiding, would turn over the, the uh, fugitive to his original uh, datu, if he's wanted, if he's a wanted person. See, so same with the debt. Okay? If a, a slave escapes because uh, he, wants, he doesn't want to pay the debt, he becomes a fugitive, hides in another barangay, and uh, the other datu would see him in his vicinity, and he has no uh, receipt or proof that he has paid, he will arrest that guy and uh, return him to the original datu, and probably that's how uh, they they worked. Okay? The coordination of the different datus among one another, and uh, they can speak Tagalog, so they can understand one another. Now, last, as uh, we have seen in history books, if one cannot pay a debt, he becomes a slave until the debt is paid and uh, probably uh, we can equate this in our time there there's no more slavery in our time in the modern times but uh, there is something some similar that uh, is practiced you know the bali okay bali is like the, uh, an advanced payment or advanced uh, salary if you're working for a rich man uh, suppose uh, you're washing uh, his laundry or you're cutting his the grass in his lawn okay and uh, you, you need money a big amount instantly but your salary is small you can ask for a bali from your uh, employer you say uh, can I have a three months advance of my salary because I need to enroll my uh, child in Malayan the elegant school so he gives you a three months worth of your salary and you, you got what you wanted but you have to work for three months for that person uh, technically no pay because you got your pay already in advance so you work for the money okay? you work for the debt you incurred and after you have paid uh, the three months, it's now quits. Okay, you you are now free of the debt, and uh, it's something similar. The concept is similar to Namwaran. So he probably had a big debt from the datu of uh, Diwata or or Los Banos, and he paid for it for a long time. He got his receipt, and uh, he's a free man, and he can do whatever he wants now. Travel wherever he wants and uh, he can pass on the LCI to his children and grandchildren as a proof that they are free men as well. Okay? So that's the story of the LCI. Did you enjoy our lesson? So, 
What have we learned today? Okay, we have seen that the, the culture of the Filipinos were very um, sophisticated during the pre-colonial times. We had a civilization, we had our system, we had our uh, hierarchy, okay? And uh, we have our culture, our handwriting, our alphabet, our way of uh, reckoning the years. We have a civilization already, okay? A great civilization before the coming of the Spaniards. Now, I will... Uh, I will uh, place a question in, in uh, the discussion board. I want you to answer that, okay? And uh, the question is this. Um, do you think we Filipinos are a weak race? Because comparing our civilization to the other civilizations in Asia and Europe, we, we don't have massive structures like big temples and uh, big palaces for kings and emperors. And also a big difference is they write history. We don't. The early writings or reading materials dug up in those places like in Babylonia, in uh, ancient China, ancient India, in uh, ancient Japan, in ancient Greece, ancient Rome, ancient Egypt. They wrote about the reigns of their kings, about invasions and earthquakes, what year it happened. They talked about laws that they made, edicts of kings. They have that recorded on tablets and other uh, uh, writing materials dug up. And we can see them today in museums. But how about the Philippines? Do we have similar written records? We only have one, the LCI. And it's not even a history book or a page from the history book. It's a receipt. <laughs> it's a recibo. <laughs> That's what our ancestors write. Recibo. Because we love to utang. <laughs> While other civilizations, they wrote great histories of their people, of their nation, of their kingdoms and empires. So what do you think? Are we a weak race? Yes or no? And justify your answer. If you answered yes, you give me a two or one or two sentence explanation. If you say no, you also write an explanation. So that will be in the discussion board. Okay, so that's all for today. I hope you learned a lot today. Your minds uh, got cultivated with the ideas, questions, curiosity. That's what history is all about. It's not memorization, but it's analysis. So this is Sir Jet saying goodbye, thank you, I'll see you in our next episode.